On these quiet streets of Zachary, Louisiana, just north of Baton Rouge, Doug Williams grew up in a poor but loving family. While he went on to help pave the way for black quarterbacks in the NFL, it was here that he learned to persevere. You're from Zachary, Louisiana. There were only 8,000 people there when you grew up. What was it like? Oh, man. Today, you know, it's a lot better today than it was yesterday. <laughs> you know, because I tell people all the time, they, they look at Doug Williams and they, they think about the Super Bowl MVP. When I think about where I come from, it's, it's a smile on my face because that's not where I am today. And, uh, you know, I was 14 years old. People don't understand that. It was eight of us in our family and I was the third youngest. So just imagine being 14 years old before you get running water. So, you know, I was fortunate, I was blessed to get an opportunity, uh, you know, to get, get out of that part of it and, and give my kids an opportunity not to do what, what I was able to do. You went to Grambling, you coached at Grambling, you played for one of the greatest coaches in the history of football, Coach Robinson. Uh, was it such an honor to play for him? Was that the only place you were going to go? Well, I think I think when you when you back in the day, you know, understand this, especially in the South, integration didn't happen in the South until 1970. So you didn't have no other choice but to go to a historical uh, black college at that time. You weren't gonna play quarterback at the SEC school. You weren't gonna play quarterback in the, in the SWC Southwestern Conference. So going to Grambling to me was the best place, and having a guy like Eddie Robinson around me all the time. And one thing we always talked about, if you can do it at Grambling, you can do it anywhere you go and not let anybody tell you what you can't do, but go out and do the things that you're capable of doing. Well, you were the first black quarterback ever drafted in the first round. Uh, you know, it was rough times there, but did you know that you were a social pioneer? Well, well you know what? When Tampa drafted me in the first round, all I was looking forward to was getting that opportunity, not so much from a social standpoint, because that, that part actually didn't bother me. But once you get there and you realize some of the things that you had to overcome, and I always remember one thing, Leslie, you know, when I first got to Tampa, I was either Doug Williams, Tampa Bay's black quarterback, or uh, Tampa Bay's black quarterback, Doug Williams. <laughs> it was either that way. <laughs> they always used that adjective, no matter what happened. Drafted in 1978, Williams spent five years in Tampa where he was the lowest paid starting quarterback in the league. Dissatisfied with his contract, he left the NFL for four years until joining Washington as the backup in 1986. Against all odds, he was named the starter in Super Bowl XXII. What was the pressure you felt in the Super Bowl? Did you feel you had the weight of race on your shoulders? You know, the Super Bowl day, you know, I, I made sure that whole week I didn't. I did not get caught up in the uh, the black quarterback syndrome. That would that would have been the worst thing to happen for me is to buy into it. And I understood uh, the significance of being the first black quarterback to play in the Super Bowl, but I also looked at it from the standpoint that I was the starting quarterback uh, for the Washington Redskins, who just happened to be black. So the most important thing is to be that starting quarterback, not be black. I can be black after it was over with. And, and, and when the game was over with, you can paint me whatever color you want. But at the end of the day, I understood the impact. And, and you know, as I got as I gotten older, I, I really do, you know. And I got a daughter named Ashley, 37 years old. She texted me one Father's Day and, you know, kind of brought me to tears because she said she did not realize that her daddy was such an impact on so many people. She said, because all I know is daddy. You know, that, that's, that's a good feeling because that's the way it should be. We see so many black quarterbacks now. When and how did you see it change? I think in the last three years, you can really see the change. You know, I got goosebumps sitting at number one to see Deshaun and, 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 and Patrick uh, meet and, and greet and realize these guys are going to be starting on Thursday night, the first game of the year, um, quarterback, the two highest paid athletes in the league, uh, that's how far we've come. But that same week, that same week, it was 10, a total of 10 black quarterbacks starting. That's almost unheard of. You know, people say, have we arrived? I think we've come a long ways. We still got a little ways to go. 
because the way I look at it, now we need the backup quarterbacks who will be around for a long time that get a chance to become head coaches. That's the part we got to get to next.